everyone hi how are you doing today so i welcome you to another lecture with zenith academy online i am shravika jamnik and i am going to be your teacher for today today we are going to learn about something that we see everywhere yet something that is so important for existence of life on earth soil so let's begin the uppermost layer of earth surface is soil so the uppermost layer the layer that we usually see is soil it contains air water and various minerals important for plants so soil is essentially porous what does porous mean it means it has these tiny pores in it which give enough space for air and water to seep into it and this in turn helps in the growth of plants it is essential for existence of life now why am i saying this because soil is essential for growth of plants and for everything to survive they need food all the animals require food and their food is actually plants so if no plants then no life which means if no soil if no soil no plant if no plant then no humans or no other animal basically if no soil no life on earth let's now learn about layers of soil now that we know what soil is let's see the layers okay so the top most layer is known as horizon o that is humus then there's horizon a horizon b horizon c and d so why is this horizon o i think of it as origin okay so this is zero this is nothing zero and then there is a b c d so first comes horizon o and not horizon a keep that in mind horizon o is humus what does humus mean humus means decomposed matter such as plants and animal remains so when plants and animals when they die uh, they decompose on this layer on the surface and this decomposed matter is actually a very good fertilizer which is known as humus so the horizon o is has a lot of decomposed matter humus it is dark and thin as you can see in this picture it's dark and it's very thin compared to all the other layers and it's very fertile as i mentioned decomposed matter is very fertile then there is horizon a that is top soil this is the first layer and this is top soil it is very fine particles of clay and sand plants grow in this layer you can see that the we see plants above the surface but the roots can you see these roots they extend in the top soil in this layer and they get their minerals and their water and air that has seeped in from this layer that is the top soil and it is also a very fertile layer because there's presence of a lot of lot of humus in this layer as well it is rich in humus and minerals the third layer is horizon b that is subsoil so there is humus top soil and subsoil what must the subsoil have it obviously occurs below the top soil it contains gravel rocks and stones larger size than top soil it allows water to seep through it so as you can see this layer does not have a lot of rocks this layer also does not have rocks or gravel but this layer has some rocks and some gravel and as you keep going in downward direction the density of rocks increases here's just soil some rocks little more rocks in the upper layer and then there is bedrock 
So concentration of rocks will increase as you go downwards. In subsoil, therefore, there are rocks and there's gravel and stones larger than the uh, topsoil. It also allows water to seep through it. So which means this is also a porous layer. Then the last layer is horizon C, regolith. Regolith has rocks, okay, more rocks. There are no nutrients or there's no hummus present here. So the plants cannot actually grow in subsoil that is horizon B or horizon C. And uh, uh, you can see that from here, from horizon C, a lot of concentration of rocks will start and there will be no life present here. That is no plant or animal life present here. And it's so concentrated, so dense that eventually water and uh, air will not be able to pass through it. So maybe till here it's porous, but porosity will also decrease as you keep going downwards. Here there will be no porosity at all. That means no water or air will be able to seep in. Here, maybe a little, very tiny amount of air and water will be able to seep in. Here, water and air can seep in. And here, it's, it's very porous. And that's why life exists the most in these layers. That is hummus and topsoil. Uh, that is horizon A. So, I hope this is clear to you. If it's not or if you have any questions, please mention them in the comments. So, let's move on. Where does soil come from? It's natural. It must have not just always been here, right? Is it possible? Let's see how soil was formed. The process of breaking of rocks, breaking of rocks into fine soil particles is called as weathering. This weather is not the climate or the rain and the sun, not that kind of weathering. This is a different kind of weathering. It means breaking of rocks to form soil. It is a very slow process. Weathering takes hundreds and thousands of years. You will see why. So let's begin. See in this rock, water has seeped in. Okay, And usually this happens that when there is rain, a lot of rain, water will seep inside rocks. Now you will say rock is, you can't penetrate a rock. But you can. You can because when there's a lot of rain and rain keeps falling on the same spot again and again and again, then eventually the rock has to give up and the water will seep. The rock will break a bit and if water gets even a tiny, tiny, tiny crack, then the water will go inside and keep making the crack bigger. So this is what happens in this case. And then it, when it gets very cold, the water freezes. The water inside the rock freezes. And this is something that happened probably hundreds of years ago when uh, the climate on earth wasn't as hot as it is now. So then this was possible that the water everywhere just got converted to ice. Uh, and when do you know that water when it gets converted to ice, its volume gets increased, okay? Water expands. So, so initially, if you can see, if there's a little amount of water over here and it gets converted to ice, ice will require more space and therefore it will crack the rock a little more. So the water will freeze and expand and then it will again contract when it's summer season or when it's a little bit sunny, not so chill. And this expansion and contraction again and again will cause the rocks to break down. This is weathering. So see, initially there were big rocks, okay. This was also probably just one rock and then water started seeping inside and started forming cracks in this. Then eventually... More and more water kept falling on this. Then this rock got converted to this rock. The smaller rocks or gravel 
and eventually soil was formed okay so this is still this is still not very very fine and now what will happen is this these small tiny particles of rocks will be taken away with the help of say wind or if there is a nearby river the river will carry these small particles away and they'll crash here and there and they'll break down even further they'll keep breaking and eventually they'll become so small they'll become fine powder of soil and then they will deposit over there so now you know that it's a very slow process okay so i hope you remember weathering okay the process of breaking of rocks into fine soil soil particles is called weathering so as i mentioned that the rocks were taken away by the river or by wind so if rocks can be taken away even soil can be taken away right like this soil is very fine powder and it can certainly be taken away and this is known as soil erosion the removal of fertile top layer of soil by the action of wind and water is known as soil erosion so it is the removal by uh, by natural things or by man but it is the removal of the fertile top layer and this is known as soil erosion let's see some agents of soil erosion first agent is water so uh, see here in this case there are these rocks okay and can you see notice this the rock has this pattern okay this pattern is not naturally formed it can be formed when probably the water level in this region was very high and the water kept flowing and because the water kept flowing it kept crashing to the borders to the river banks here and then it eventually broke down the rock and gave the rock this shape okay so water has the capacity to take rocks away right so it can erode uh, soil as well so water is one of the main reasons for soil erosion second agent is wind wind if there is no if there is nothing on this soil it will be very easy to carry the soil because essentially soil is light it's not very heavy so wind can carry soil there's also human activities of course because we want to in uh, because we have an increase in population we require a lot of things we require roads we require houses to stay in and that's why also removal of the top soil takes place so human activities are also an agent of soil erosion now let's see how we can conserve soil soil conservation the process of protecting soil against erosion is soil conservation how can we do this methods of conservation of soil first is avoid deforestation we know that weathering takes a long time and soil takes a long time to form so we have to conserve soil now what we can do is avoid deforestation deforestation means cutting of a lot of trees for human purposes trees when they are intact and when they are in soil they will not let the soil get eroded therefore we should not deforest a lot keep over grazing of cattle in check what happens is when the farmers or anyone that has cattle leaves their cattle for grazing the cows usually overgraze did you know that cows actually don't chew or bite their food when they take it in what they do is they take a lot of food lot of food they directly gulp it and the food directly goes into their stomach and then when the cows sit and relax they sit and then they start chewing their food so it's <laughs> so cows have to eat up a lot of food and then the food will come up when they feel that they have time to chew the food 
so because of this reason the cows can take in soil along with their along with these with the grass that they are eating or any kind of fodder that they are eating or these plants they are eating so they have to keep overgrazing in check because once the cow starts eating keep eating keep eating keep eating and it will not uh, keep in mind that the cow is eating our soil which is very essential for us so we have to keep overgrazing in check the third thing is farmers should grow cover crops so see in this case uh, the brown thing these are the crops that we require okay these these are the crops uh, and this area if it did not have these tiny tiny plants then this soil would have been exposed this soil would have been exposed to wind or any other agent or cattle or water and this soil would have gotten eroded so to prevent that they have planted these small crops known as cover crops and because of these cover crops this soil present here where no crop is being grown this soil here will get conserved so this is another great idea cover crops embankments along rivers to uh, so if there are no embankments over here the river will go on expanding and with its expansion it will take away the soil that is present on the river banks if there is no embankment okay this is called embankment okay because of which uh, the water is not going uh, away from the area designated for the river so the water is not going in this region it's just staying here if it would have gone here it would have taken the soil present here with itself too so we have to avoid that right and that's why embankments are very important on river banks bunds along the boundary of fields during rains during rains there's a high chance that the water will flow away this water will flow away and take the top fertile soil this will be first of all it will be uh, the farmer will be at a disadvantage if it's if the fertile soil goes away so what these farmers do is they put these bunds these bunds will not allow the water to flow from this region to this region or to just flow basically so these bunds will protect soil from getting eroded so this is another very good technique i hope you all understood let's see the methods of conservation again avoid deforestation keep overgrazing of cattle in check farmers should grow cover crops embankments along rivers bunds along the boundary of fields during rains so i hope this chapter is clear to you and if you have any doubts or questions please don't shy please put them in the comment section below please like share and subscribe bye bye see you soon